Hello, this is Matt, and today I'd like to share with you the latest version of the Barnes & Noble Nook e-reader. I picked this up a few days ago from my local Barnes & Noble store for $139. This comes with a Wi-Fi radio in it, and there is no wireless option. So unlike the Kindle, which has a 3G option, this one currently only has a Wi-Fi and a USB connector on it. Um, the big thing that sets this device, the Nook, apart from the Amazon Kindle, is that the Nook is a touchscreen device as opposed to the physical interaction on the Amazon Kindle. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and cover some of the basic physical attributes of the Nook e-reader. Um, first off, it, the page turn buttons, as with the Kindle, are on each side. And as with the Kindle, this is not backwards and this is not forwards. There's actually two sets of buttons on each side and you can program them for which one goes forward and which one goes backwards, which is very nice. Um, down here at the bottom, we have a home button, which, which brings up the unlock screen for the Nook and allows you to interact with the device. Um, going around to the back, we have a power button up here. Now this physical power button will also allow you to turn the unit completely off as opposed to just putting it in standby where there's a static picture on the front. Um, it has a nice contoured back, rubber back, so it doesn't slip out of your hand. There's a Nook logo right here. On this side we have a memory card slot with a little number behind it, which I believe is a serial number for this device. Um, on the bottom, we have our little USB connector for connecting it to our computer and charging device. There is no speakers, and there is no headphone jack, and there is no volume control. Um, there are little tabs down here to allow this device to be hooked into accessories such as um, lights and carrying cases for the Nook. All right, so um, to activate your Nook, you push the home button, and the unlock screen will show up. And to unlock the screen, you go ahead and run your finger right along the bottom. And there you go. It opens up to right where you left off in your book. I'm currently reading um, Life on the Line by Grant Ackett, who is a Chicago chef. Um, and I can highly recommend this book for anybody in the culinary world. It's a pretty, pretty good read. Um, like all e-readers, you have a milky white background with some really nice high contrast text on it on the page and this is where we begin to see the differences between the Amazon Kindle and the Barnes & Noble Nook e-reader. To access the options for the page you just go ahead and tap the center of the page and up comes the options. Down here at the bottom we have content, we have find, we have go to, we have text attributes and we have a more button. Today we're going to focus on the text attributes. Um, we can go really really small we can go really, really big for a font. And we can go to what I use right here, which is right here. Now I've noticed that this one is a little bit too small for me, but this one is a little bit too big for me. Um, so I I, uh, I go for the one that's a little bit small and I hold it closer to my face. I wish the bigger one was a little smaller, but oh well. Um, down here we have line spacing, so you can have minimal line spacing. And you can have really, really big line spacing. Notice how the the display changes no matter what uh, option you pick. And then down here to margins, we have really narrow margins, we have medium sized margins, and we have really big margins. Now these are all really nice options to have in your e-reader. And then down here at the bottom we have what the publisher thinks you should read the book as, and I, I usually don't select that one. Over here on the left we have the fonts, so you can have that one. You can have this one which is a little more bold. And then you have the sans serif, which doesn't have any details on it. And there you go. I prefer this one right here, which looks like New Century School Book, sort of. Um, to close it, you just hit the little X button up here, and away it goes. There it goes. You just need to be a little more, uh, how should I say, a little more patient with the touch screen. So it doesn't like quick movements sometimes. Um, so to navigate, you go ahead and hit the shoulder, the side buttons to go forward and backwards. Notice there's a flash there, but when you go like that, there isn't one there. I think it's every sixth transition you get a flash. Um, so there's backwards and then there's forwards. And then you can use the touch screen. So this is backwards and this is forwards. So you have backwards and forwards. So just like on the iPad or your other touchscreen tablets, you can use your finger gestures. Um, I don't believe this one supports multi-touch. 
All right, so there you go. Now, one last thing about the document here is this uses using physical page numbers, 164 out of 342. Those are actual page numbers in the book. So you, you can refer to them using those numbers to your friends who might be reading the physical book as opposed to trying to refer to the arbitrary numbers in the Amazon Kindle. However, if the uh, the software applications which run on the iPad, the iPhone, and your computer actually allow for the physical book page numbers as opposed to the Kindle device. I'm not sure if that will be a software upgrade on my Kindle or not, but mine still shows percentages and vague numbers. Um, Anyways, so let's go look at some of the menu options. Notice how the background grays out and the menu bar becomes the highlight of, the, of attention on the, on the device when you push it to home screen. I like that a lot. So it gives it depth and it brings your focus down here. This is pretty neat. So go ahead and we'll go hit and home and we'll go to a home page and we see what I'm reading right now and we see what I've been reading in the past or looking at. And then down here are some recommendations from Barnes & Noble. So you can get to your library by either clicking the home button and using the library command or you can go ahead and use the little link right here on that page and it takes you to your library and these are the books I currently have you can view it in um, the cover view or you can go to a list view and you can also sort by different attributes up here all right okay so anyways we can go back and we'll go shopping now shopping is a really neat part because I think the shopping experience on the Nook is a lot easier than it is on the Amazon Kindle because it allows more interaction and it, it just seems a lot more seamless than, than on the Kindle. Um, first off, here's my categories over here. Um, books, magazines, newspapers. Over here are popular lists, you know, the New York Times bestsellers and new releases and so forth. And down here are specific advertisements for Barnes & Noble. Um, in particular is this one right back here, the free cookie offer. And this is pretty neat. This is an electronic coupon on your Nook. So you touch that and what you get is you discover that you can have a coupon for a free fresh, fresh baked cookie with the purchase of any size Frappuccino and there's the barcode. So you just take this into a Barnes & Noble and you have them scan it and there you go. So Barnes & Noble is learning from Borders mistakes because Borders would not accept electronic coupons on electronic devices, which I found to their downfall. Anyways, Barnes & Noble, thank you very much. All right, so there you go. So if you want to peruse this, you can just select one of your items here, and it brings up a list of the books. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead and click this one. And Heaven is for Real, Little Boy's Astounding Story of His Trip to Heaven and Back. Here's a synopsis. And you scroll up by just moving your finger up. And there you go. And you can go down by going down. There you go. You can add to your wish list. You can share it with a friend. I don't know what the archive means. That's the, this is a new button. I, this is the first time I've seen the archive button. Up here we have reviews of, of customers who has enjoyed it. Uh, some of them like it, I guess. Over here, we there you go. Very uplifting. Close it. Then we have uh, related titles, uh, which is not ne necessarily by the same author, but also the same category or genre right there. All right, so we go back to overview. And then here you can buy it for 613, or you can read a sample, you can download a sample to your Nook, so you can go ahead and do that. Just touch that, and there you go, it'll download a sample. Oh, look, it opens it up, there you go. And of course you can immediately start looking at your sample. We only have 26 pages, so, you know, it's only a, only a, a partial sample. You can buy the rest of the book if you want. Oh, there's a buy now. Look at that. There's a buy now button right up there. That's pretty keen. So it takes you right back to the store. And um, I've already signed up. Uh, you have to sign up on the Barnes & Noble website to get your account. Unlike the Amazon Kindle, which came already assigned to my uh, my Amazon account with my credit card and so forth already set up, this one you need to go and either set up through the device or go to the Barnes & Noble website and set it up with using their device, their uh, their tools, which they have on the site, um, which, is, which is okay. It's fine. But anyways, that pretty much covers all the functionality of the Barnes & Noble Nook. Now, some of the aspects that I like about this device over the Amazon Kindle is that just the form factor. It's a nice size. It's easy to use. You can hold it in your hand. It doesn't um, It doesn't have this keyboard on the bottom. The, uh, the Kindle has a keyboard on the bottom, which I only, I only use like a third of the time. I only use it for searching stuff. And um, like I've discussed in the past, it's, it's hard to see. 
Um, and if, <laughs> if you've noticed in my videos, um, my previous video about the Kindle, I, uh, I talked about how these buttons can be confused right here. Well, I actually did that in the video. If you look at the video, I confuse these buttons even in the video. This is back, that's menu, and that's home. And um, I confused them all while trying to explain them to you in my Kindle video, which was very sort of comical. Um, over here, you don't have that problem, but you don't have any buttons. Um, it's all touch screen, and uh, I, I really like it. It's nice to hold in the hand. Um, it does everything I want. Uh, I wish the text was a little bit bigger in, in one of their settings, but besides that, I, I don't have any complaints with it. Um, so this has been Matthew Sievert, and today I've been talking about the, the current version of the Barnes & Noble Nook e-reader. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.